Okay, today we're going to be going over oxygen demand. So first off, what is oxygen demand and why is it important? Well, it might be hard to see, but bodies of water have dissolved oxygen in them. As you already know, all living things need to have oxygen to survive, and the dissolved oxygen is the reason why we have aquatic life. Now, the biochemical oxygen oxygen demand, or the BOD, is a measurement of the waste strength in the wastewater. And these wastes are typically rich in ammonia, nitrogen, and carbon-based compounds. So the greater of concentration of either of those two things, then the greater the BOD. The reason why environmental engineers like to know the BOD is if you discharge waste into a water source and if the waste was left untreated or wasn't treated enough, it could deplete the oxygen reserves dissolved in the water and kill a lot of aquatic life. There are two types, CBOD, which is the carbon biochemical oxygen demand and NBOD, the nitrogen biochemical oxygen demand. In CBOD, we start with our carbon-based compound and it reacts with oxygen to yield carbon dioxide and water because we are trying to get the carbon to no longer be dissolved in the water. Similarly, in NBOD, we start with ammonia, nitrogen, and it reacts with oxygen to yield nitrate, a hydrogen ion, and water. These two chemical equations are super important to remember, and we'll dive in on how to use them in a bit. Oh, and the theoretical BOD is just the CBOD plus the NBOD. Let's go over some steps on how to solve these types of problems first. So first step, write down the chemical equations, depending on which one you're trying to solve for, the CBOD or the NBOD. Next, you're going to balance out the carbons or the nitrogens. And the third step, you're going to balance out the hydrogens and then the oxygens. In the fourth step, you'll convert moles to oxygen and carbon nitrogens into mass. That It sounds confusing right now, but you'll, it'll make more sense once we go over some examples. Oh, and it's also a good idea to have a periodic table because it will really help you with Step number four. Okay, so let's go over a few examples. Okay, so our first problem here, it says an industrial wastewater is discharged to a river with 272 milligrams per liter of the protein propionate, which is given by this chemical formula right there, and 76 milligrams per liter of ammonium as nitrogen. What is the theoretical CBOD, MBOD, and total oxygen demand? Okay, so first let's start off with CBOD. So first we're gonna start off by writing our um, chemical equation for CBOD. So our carbon compound is CH3CH2. COOH and then finishing off our formula we have it reacts with oxygen and it yields CO2 and water H2O all right so first let's start off by balancing out the carbons so if we put a, a three here we should have three carbons on both sides. Then we balance out the hydrogens. So we put a three here. We should get six hydrogens on each side, right? Yep. And we put a 3.5 here, and that should balance out the oxygens. Okay, now this is where our periodic table will come in handy. We're going to convert the moles of, each, of these two elements into its mass. So if you take 
CH3, CH2, COOH. That's going to be, well, first we'll look at the periodic table, the mass for carbon, and that's 12. So 12, the mass of hydrogen is one. So 12 plus three times one plus 12 plus two times one plus 12. And then oxygen is 16. So plus 16 times two plus one. That should get you 74 milligrams. And then oxygen, so 16 times two is 32 and then times 3.5 will get you 112 milligrams. So now we want one milligram of this element right here. And to get to that, we divide it by 74. So you're gonna divide by 74 over here. So 112 divided by 74 is 1.51 milligrams. And so we had 272 milligrams of this compound right here, Oops, milligrams. And to get from there to here, you had to multiply by 272. So we're gonna do 1.51 times 272, and that should give us 411.7 milligrams. And that's for CBOD. Okay, now, we're, actually, let me fix that. Make that a little nicer. CBOD. Okay, now we're gonna start our MBOD. And scooch it there. Okay, so we're gonna write our formula for the MBOD. So we have NH4 as nitrogen plus the oxygen yields our nitrate. Uh, hydrogen ion and water. All right, so let's start balancing this. So th there's one nitrogen on both sides, so it's already balanced. Now we're gonna balance out the hydrogens. Put a two here, then there'll be four hydrogens on both sides. Okay, now we just balance out the oxygens by putting a two over here. <laughs> And that should balance out all the oxygens. So now we'll repeat this same process like over here. So ammonium as nitrogen, you're just gonna worry about the nitrogen. So that's 14 milligram. And then 202, that will get you 64 milligrams. So we want one more milligram of this. And to get there, we divide it by 14. So we're gonna divide by 14 over here, and that is 4.6 milligrams. And then we had, I mean, we had over here, we had 76 milligrams of this. So, and we multiply, so we gotta multiply 76 times 4.6, which is 347. Point four milligrams. So that's for the NBOD. So the total is going to be CBOD plus the NBOD. So 411.7 plus 347 point four. And that will give you 759.1 milligrams. Our next problem, a waste contains 100 milligrams per liter of acetic acid. And the chemical formula for that is CH3COOH and 50 milligrams per liter of ammonia as nitrogen. 
determine the theoretical CBOD and BOD and the total oxygen demand. So we're going to start off with CBOD again. BOD. Okay, let's write out our carbon formula. So CH3COOH plus O2 yields CO2 and H2O. Okay, so balancing out the carbons, if we put a two over here, oops, sorry. Put a two over here. You'll have two carbons on each side. Now we're gonna balance out the hydrogens. If you put a two here, you'll have four hydrogens on each side. Now we balance out the oxygens. Put a two here and you'll have six oxygens on each side. So everything's balanced, right? So calculating the mass of that, you have 12 plus three times one plus 12 plus 16 times two plus one. That should give you 60 milligrams. And over here, two of twos gives you 64 milligrams. Right, so now we want one milligram of this. And to get there, we did, we divided by 60. So 64 divided by 60 is 1.067. So now that we have 100 milligrams of this compound, we need to multiply this by 100. So we get roughly 107 milligrams. That's for our CBOD. Okay, so now we're going to do the NBOD. Oops. NBOD. So NBOD. So we'll start off by writing our equation. So we got ammonia as nitrogen plus O2 yields and O3 minus plus the hydrogen ion plus H to, oh. Okay, first thing we're going to do is balance out the nitrogens. There's one nitrogen on both sides already, so it's balanced. Then we go ahead and balance the hydrogens. There's already three on each side, so it's already balanced. So now we balance out the oxygen. We put it two here. That'll give us four oxygens on each side, so we're good to go. We're ready to convert these moles into masses. So it gave us 50 milligrams per liter of NH3 as nitrogen. So that means we only have to worry about nitrogen. So we got 14 milligrams here. And then two O2s is 64 milligrams. All right. So now we want one milligram of this compound. And to get to that, we had to divide by 14. So 64 divided by 14 is 4.56. And then we had we want we have 50. Ah, I can't talk. We have 50 milligrams of this. So we're going to multiply by 50 over here, and 4.56 times 50 is roughly 229, about there milligrams and it's for NBOD for NBOD okay so the total is just going to be 107 plus 229 
and that gives you 336, right? Yeah, 336 milligrams. Okay, in our next problem, a waste contains 100 milligrams per liter of ethylene glycol, which is C2H6O2, and 50 milligrams per liter of NH3 as nitrogen. Determine the theoretical CBOD, NBOD, and total oxygen demand. Okay, so we'll start off with our carbon equation. So we got C6. Oops, my bad. C2. C, C2. H6O2. Yeah, O2. Plus. O2 yields CO2 and H2O. 2O. So first, we're going to balance out the hydrogens. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, we're going to balance out the carbons. So if we put a 2 here, we should have two carbons on each side. Then we balance out the hydrogens, put a three here. We should have six hydrogens on both sides. Now we're going to balance out the oxygens. If you put it 2.5, 2.5, everything should be balanced out. So as we did before, this here, if you calculate the molecular mass of this, you get 62 milligrams. Over here, you have 80 milligrams. If you go down to one milligram, you're divided by 62. So you got to take 80 divided by 62, which is 1.29. It's 1.20. Here, let me do a better job with that. 1.29 milligrams. And we had 100 milligrams of this. So multiply this by 100, you get 129 milligrams. That's for a C, oops, C, B, O, D. Okay, now moving on to the N, B, O, D. We have our NH3 as nitrogen. plus our oxygen yields our nitrate, a hydrogen ion, and our water. So you probably recognize this. This is already, we did this in the last problem. So we had to put two here to balance everything out. And it's basically the same exact thing yet 229 milligram as your NBOD. So the total is just 129 plus 229, and that should give you 358 milligrams. The textbook that I used for this topic and some of the example problems was James Milik, probably saying that wrong, and Julie Zimmerman's Environmental Engineering Fundamentals Sustainability Design, and I recommend it as a good source if you need any further help. I'll put a link to it down below. I will also link down some other sources that I think are good too. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I will be coming out with another video on the kinetics of oxygen demand, explaining the calculations that involve reaction rates. So you don't want to miss out on that. Until then, study hard.